Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back and I'm going to actually show you something I hope tonight that makes sense. <laughs> Before I forget, if this is your first time here, this is a crumb quilting adventure that we are all going on together. I will have a link for the playlist in the description box down below and also in the pinned comment and I also have it on the end screen so if you make it to the end of this video you will see it there. You're just following me along right from making crumb blocks to a finished small quilt at the end is the goal. So please subscribe and you won't miss it. Okay, what I want to do tonight is, you know, when we have blocks partially made like this, even though we know we can just throw anything together, when you start to get bigger and you know you're getting close to whatever size block you want, sometimes we want to pay attention to like, okay, I need more on this side or I'm going to need more on this side so that I can get a 6x6 six six block or whatever block size you're using. So we have to have a little bit of planning. Now I don't know, I might have said this before, I like to have my blocks bigger than what I'm cutting because I like the scrap to not be wasted. For instance, if I were cutting like a block this size, you know, if I cut like here, this little piece of scrap would go away. But if I have a big enough block and I cut a smaller block, all that outside scrap is usable again. So I just like to build bigger than I need and, you know, not just have like really rough edges that are useless. So for the heck of it, let's say that we wanted to make this kind of square, at least four-sided. doesn't have to be square, but you know, we don't like all these angles that we have because this, and then it goes like this. Now, if somebody wanted to put a piece here, you are certainly allowed to like, you know, put a whole piece You'd have to be kind of like this and you lose some of this blue because this is not straight. It goes this way and then it goes this way. So I'm going to show you how to fill these things in. And one thing you can do, which I've never done, you can put your piece of fabric on a piece of paper if you want. And then, hello pen, where are you? Well, let's just use this. If you wanted to get an idea of like what you have to do, it might help to do this on a piece of paper. Like let's say we wanted to come out like that and like this and like this. Let me just finish this square here. I don't want to write on my actual fabric. So you can see we need like a triangle here. And then we would need, if we want to stay with this line, we would need a piece like this and then that would give us a nice big triangle is all we would have left to do. This piece would actually be like this. It would go like here and like that. That might look confusing, but let's just start with this corner. We know we need some kind of a triangular piece to make this more rectangle or square. So I'm going to just take this off now the first thing I will do is trim it a little bit because we got some, you know, stuff going on there and just going to trim it like this just as long as we have like a kind of a straight line. Now we need some kind of triangle. It doesn't actually have to be a triangle shape as long as it's big enough that we can cut it out after and trim it and it doesn't have to be something plain. Let me look here. For instance, I could use this big piece. What I like to do first is I like to make sure that when I, you know, press and open that I'm going to have enough to do the trimming that I want. Sometimes it's deceiving when we put fabric and, you know, we might say, oh, I'll just sew this like this. But then when we open, we see now that we don't have a way to make a straight line there. So always put your fabric down first and say, do I have enough to make this line straight, make this line straight? Yes, we have enough. So I could use this. I don't have to trim it first. I would just be generous and have enough sticking out so that I know when I fold back, I have enough to keep my line straight and just sew that and you're good. The other thing is you can use a piece that you've already built. You can use that too. Like I could do it this way, or if I think there's too much going on there, there's never too much going on. 
this way, and again, I could just put it this way, so, and make sure, do I have enough? Am I going to be able to keep my lines the way I want them? And I have enough. Another thing you can do is, when you want to put something, but you don't want it to be all just little pieces, like, see, I love these diagonals that come in and kind of break things up a little bit. Let's do that. We can put a little piece of, let's call it sashing, you know, we'll just put a solid piece there and then it'll break it up and then this will come in and it'll look cool. So let's do that. I just need a strip of fabric or whatever I can find. Ooh, let's do this dark blue. I like that. It goes with that in the corner. Again, this isn't like straight, perfectly straight. I could trim it if I want to. I could trim it right there. But I did. And I'm going to just put um, this down and sew that on. Did I mention that I'm not nearly as tired as I was last night? Oh my god, last night, that was a... It didn't come across on video as tired as I was, but I was very, very tired. I had to edit a lot of stuff out because I was like a lunatic. <laughs> okay, let me press this open. Actually, I'm going to open and just give a general trim. So I don't have to take that tail with me to the iron. And I don't actually get up. I have the iron right next to me. Because I'm lazy. Alright. So I just threw this extra step in because I like this step. And it's my block. So I'm going to complete it in a way that I like. Alright, so I'm going to go this way. But this is like kind of curved. So I do need to straighten that out. Just doing it like this in my hand. And it's going to go like this. I want to make sure that I have enough sticking out on both sides, and I do. Now we're going to put this here and sew that down. Now this is what we have. Where's our paper? The heck of it. So we were like this, and you can see we have trimming to do, because we kind of want this to be like a straight line this way, and then this way, meaning we're going to cut like here all the way up, and then we would cut here. Now you can certainly do that with a rotary cutter if you want to. I'm going to just eyeball this shit and <laughs> do it myself. So I'm just going to cut, I'm just going to cut all the way up. Now see this is a nice big enough piece that I don't feel like it had to be attached to something before I cut it. I will not lose that. And now I'm just going to cut across like that. And we have one more cut to make right here. We just got to trim that little guy. All of a sudden now we have like half of this block squared up. I mean, you know what I mean? Just it's starting to look like a square or rectangle shape. So now we might think we have just the, this to do. And we could. We certainly could. But I'm going to show you how I want to build this side out just a little bit. Because we don't quite have a straight line here yet. See, if I were to, I'm trying to have it be so you can see. See, if I were to follow the line of this blue fabric, look, there's a whole chunk there missing. If I want to just eliminate and do just one piece of fabric, then I'd be doing this, and we would lose a lot of that blue right there, and I want to try to keep that. So, for the sake of a tutorial, we're going to do this. So, I'm just going to fill in this hole. The way I'm going to do that is I am going to go ahead and just follow the line of this right through to here. And now we need to find something to put here so that when we open it up, we'll have enough fabric that we can cut the line following this guy. I hope this isn't all confusing. Now, let me look for a piece of fabric. Once again, you can choose to just introduce a plain piece of fabric I have a hard time doing that. I always want to do something funkified. You know, like I could do just this, and it wouldn't be a big sliver of it. Or you can use something that you've already built. I was going to do this, but you know what? I'm not. I'm going to save that for another thing, and I'm going to use this. So let me just, uh, you know, cut a little piece just to make this more manageable. I'm going to get rid of my salvage just so I know I don't accidentally get that in there. So I want to uh, just put these two together. I want to make sure that I have enough here and here that I'm going to be able to cut that line. And I do. So we're going with that. 
And once again, if we were to put this on our paper, you know, we can see that we want this line to go to like here. This is where our square is kind of supposed to end. We have the black line up here. And again, you can just eyeball it as I always do, or you can use a ruler and draw some lines or use your rotary cutter, do whatever you want to do. I like to just eyeball things. So I just know that this is my line and I just follow that direction all the way up. And then I know this is my line. I'm cutting with that, with that blue. I want to follow that. So I'm going to just cut like that. And now we have a straight line that we can add something to. Now this is a pretty big chunk. Let's see. You know, if we were to put a piece of fabric there, this is, look, all this we want to fill. Now that's up to you. If you want just one fabric there, you are more than welcome to do that. Or you can, at this point, you know, start to use blocks as long as they're long enough. You know, if they're not long enough, like say I wanted that there, I'd have to add some to the end of this to make it long enough. Then we'd still have that little piece to deal with. So I'm just going to find something kind of big. I think I'm going to go with a strip of this and then I'll put something else to build up. So I'm just going to lay this down. I leave a generous end because when I flip over, I want to make sure I have enough that I can even that up. Now I can trim this here. And then we know that I don't have to leave this this wide. I just didn't want to pre-cut it. So my choices are I could trim this now if I wanted to, or I could just take some more fabric and sew it here in a wonky way and trim after. All right, I was looking for a strip or something that had multiple fabrics because I don't want just another whole plain thing. I don't want this much of the pink showing, but I have this funkified strip, do love. So I can, you know, I always try to play with it here first. I can go like this, or I could do this. I'm trying to straighten this out. So I'm thinking, let's go like that. And that would be a rectangle enough shape for me. So I'm going to flip this like this, and just so right down there. Then I'll trim this off after. So I'm going to trim this part off. And this has been pressed open. And you know, for the heck of it, I'm going to do one more. I still want to come out like here. So I'm going to need a corner piece. But let's try trimming this. Trimming this so you can just get an idea. Look at how we're very close to having this be, you know, somewhat of a rectangle. Now, I don't generally do this. I don't make sure my blocks are rectangle shape before I cut them out. But I'm just doing this to show you guys how... If you want to get a certain shape, you certainly can do it this way. Now I just need something long enough. It's surprising how long and how much fabric it takes. That's why a lot of people say, can we just make one big gigantic block? Yes, you can. But you're going to find it harder and harder because there's a point you need like a four foot strip. You know, you're getting more into crazy quilt territory and not so much crumb quilting. Crumb quilting pieces are supposed to be generally small and just scattered all over the place. So to me, even if you want just one gigantic piece, just make yourself a bunch of blocks and just put them together with no sashing, which is what I plan on doing. I really think that's the direction I will be going in because I like the looks of one gigantic block. But to work on one, it becomes very tiresome and you have the whole thing to deal with under the sewing machine. Just make yourself some pieces. Don't square them up even and then you can like put them together after the fact. But now let me look for what I'm going to do right here. I like this. I'm going to reintroduce this. I like when things repeat a little bit. I just like this block. Now see, this part of this block was done a few days ago when I was working with these particular fabrics and then I put that away. And then I can tell these are other fabrics I worked with. And now I'm starting to do like more funky stuff. I like it when the block is so mixed up. But you can have conservative blocks too. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so I want to make sure I have enough so that I'll be able to trim and we're going to make a nice, you know, kind of even block here. Like that. Let's do it like that. So I'm going to put it like this and sew. 
And again, I could add some fabric to this to, you know, have it be attached to something, but for the sake of this video and my sanity, <laughs> I'm going to cut it off. Did I press this? No, I didn't. Now at this point, we're certainly done, and you can decide how much of this you want to keep. I don't need to keep a lot of it, so let me just trim in this direction first, and down here. Can you even see anything that I just did? And then I'm going to just, I'm just going to go like that, right here. And there's a block that I think I should be able to get a 6x6 six six out of. Where's my ruler? Right here. Could have paid attention to that. Certainly can in this direction. Certainly can in that direction. So we're golden. And I have all these lovely little scraps that I can deal with. So I guess I'm going to stop with this for tonight. I just wanted to show you how you can build it out because I know the shapes get weird and you just keep adding. And again, this might be helpful if you put it down and like draw around and then you can see the puzzle better. Because isn't this a lovely puzzle? <laughs> that was probably useless. <laughs> Please subscribe so you don't miss any future quilting videos. We're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. It's all fun. It's all exciting. And I just love doing this with you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.